doing me now? I'm still the talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm hooking them down. We turn the spots in the round. Can't hop out, then we clearing the crowd. Oh, them niggas ain't do nothing for you. Gotta learn a lot from this. It's okay if it's a struggle. I came home and made it happen, but they all respect my hustle. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani, and we're back for another Talk of the Town interview. And today, who we got in the building? That's your boy, man, Viciani, man, RG, Viciani, Rochester, New York, man, stand up, 585, we here, man. Wow, what an intro. Yeah, so we have Viciani in the building. So, yes, I'm so interested to hear, like, you did you grow up in Rochester? Yeah, I was born and raised in Rochester. And how was that? It was cool, you know, it's, 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 it's uh... It ain't what, what anybody think. You know what I'm saying? Everybody mm -hmm. think of, y'all think of steak, y'all think farms and shit. I know how y'all city people be thinking. I mean, but Rochester is a little close. It's it's a little connected to the city, I guess, in yeah. a way. So what would you say, like, what do people usually think about Rochester versus, like, what it actually is? I think people think that it's, like, it's it ain't treacherous down there. Mm. Like, it get real treacherous where I'm from. The like, murder rate always high. Um, it's a lot of people getting money, and it's a lot of people making noise from Rochester too. Uh, upstate, period, though. The whole upstate, shout out the whole upstate, man. Is, is there anybody in specific like that you think that pe people should have on their radars from out there? Um, class murder for sure. Um, class murder, of course. Benny, the whole Griselda, uh, little Ito, little Pro BGM Black, um, Chamberlain, BGM Chamberlain. Okay, that's, that's, a good, that's a good amount of people. All right, so a couple of people that you named, we'll get into a little later. But, like, how was it growing up um, in Rochester and, like, coming into your own with music? Um, So, Rochester, I was, I was, uh, I started making music at a young age. I was mm. making music, like, 10, 11 years old, mm. rapping in the studio and all that. Mm. Was, um, my brother owned the studio, so he owned a big studio and shit, big company. I was... He had me recording since a young age, so I've just been rapping forever. But uh, growing up in Rochester, it was, um, it was regular, man. Just, you know, regular street shit. Mm -hmm. So I say, like, making music and going up there because I don't know, like, what the support is like out there. Like, did you have the support of the people around you while you were um, making music? Well, in, in Rochester, I, I kind of made a name for myself at a young age. So mm -hmm. ever since I started rapping, everybody knew me for, like, like raw rapping, like, bars. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Battle rap, mm -hmm. um, shit like that. So it was it was easy to make a name for myself. But I think you can only get but so big out there because it's so small. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I think like the goal would be to like lock down the whole upstate, and then you know, uh, like my target is in New York City. Okay. I get more streams out here than I do in in, in Rochester or Buffalo. All my streams mm -hmm. come from New York City. Okay. So you did mention just now you're doing battle rap. You're in King of the Ring, right? Yeah. Right. So where did that change? How did that transition come in? Like, how did you get to that point? And then how did you get into, like, making your album? So with me, I was like, I was always able to make music. So I was I was making music first before I started battle rap. Okay. So once I, I just, I, to transition out of the battle rap was easy for me because mm -hmm. I always knew how to make music. I think that's what separated me. You know, right, that's right. what separated me from the other battle rappers. Mm -hmm. So that was that, that. That was it. And then I, I could do more than just rap. You know, I could harmonize. I could sing. Uh, mm -hmm. Do everything. Which one do you like better? Um, where my heart is at. My heart is just real rap. Like, you know, what I'm saying real rap. And then the, the, like, I, I don't want to. I think real rap is harmonizing too. You know, what uh -huh. I'm saying like that pain. That's that's where my that's where all my shit pain. All my music pain. You hear? It. It's all pain. It's all real. So you said the real rap is the pain. So what do you think about like, like the diss tracks and like the music with people just? I, I think I think the diss tracks is the diss tracks is, is needed. I feel like for hip hop, like I feel like hip hop and hip hop wouldn't be hip hop if it wasn't any like controversy between other artists. Mm -hmm. But as far as like dissing the dead, I, I always been against that shit. Mm -hmm. You dish the dead, and that's how people start dying and shit. You, know? right. you can't come back from that shit. So, of course, it's a big thing that's trending right now. So, I, you kind of spoke on it. I just want to get your thoughts. What do you think about, like, the whole, like, DJs, like, planning on, like, not playing the diss tracks anymore? I get or, it. You know? I get it. I understand it. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I, I don't think it's going to stop. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's trending. It's what's saying. And mm -hmm. it's what's selling. 
Right. So if that's what's selling, that's what they're going to do, even if they ain't even like that. Neither. You got yeah. people making records that ain't even like that, talking yeah. about smoking on niggas they ain't even smoke. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that's not gangster. Absolutely. I mean, I'm glad to hear your your thoughts on that. That yeah. was just a quick little segue. So I do want to go back a little. I know, like, you just got out mm -hmm. a few, not too long ago. Yeah. Um, so what was your, you don't have to get in detail, of course, of what your time was like in there, but like, did it motivate you at all? Like, did you know what the plan was when you were coming out? Yeah. Yeah. I had, uh, I wrote, all All this was written. I wrote all this down. I planned to come to New York. My, my target audience for when I came home was New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I planned all of this. I planned everything from the day that I came home. I had a plan to, to do everything that I'm doing. I'm just checking off the list. So, so I was focused. I'm sorry. I no, that's cool. So what would you say was the hardest part about you making that transition from being locked up, coming in? Because it was kind of like... I, I got you. It was, okay. <laughs> it's the time. It's the time. So it's like coming home, right? And then um, trying to find time for the people that's important and the people that was there for you while you was in, mm -hmm. but still trying to chase your dreams at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That, that's the toughest part because I'll be everywhere. Right. Like, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm on the road, we doing shows, I'm out with murder, we going everywhere, like, mm -hmm. and I'm still trying to balance that time with the kids or, or trying to make up that time that I miss. That's the toughest part, it's finding balance. Now, in terms of the music side, what would you say? Would you say that the music scene was different from the time you went in to the time you got out? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Were you keeping up with music while you were locked up? Yeah, I came home with a whole new sound. Like the the, the sound that y'all hear for me now, yeah, like that ain't how I was rapping back then. Right. I was really like hardcore rapping back then, like on some cypher shit. I was really hardcore rapping. Now I'm harmonizing. I'm on I'm on the drill scene. Mm -hmm. I'm rap. You know what I'm saying? I do everything, and I and it, I don't do it because it's in. I love it though. Like I really love making that kind of music. Mm -hmm. it's, it's cool to me. Okay, so you did it because you genuinely liked it, not because you were trying to keep up with what was nah, going on. Nah, hell no, nah. I liked it. So okay. once I once I heard it, I'm mean, the whole time I was in jail, I, I I was tuned in. I was I had a good support system. They were sending me everything, mm -hmm. all the music that was dropping. I was getting sent, so I was able to stay in tune with the new sound and come home. Okay, so did you um start writing balance the tracks for balance when you were in? Yeah, yep. Yeah. All that that whole. This whole uh, balance thing was all was all planned from that prison. Mm. Um, I ain't had no beats, of course, so mm -hmm. a lot of my songs change. Cause you know we go in there, we we just we beating on our chest and we making music, right. and then we come home, people try to make beats for them, and they don't be coming out right. Right. But once I was able to uh, come in the studio and really see how I sound on, on the mic mm -hmm. with the harmonizing and stuff, then I was able to start making new music. But I knew the whole theme for my album was going to be balanced, though. So what was that process like, transitioning from having your lyrics written down to finding that beat? How long would you say it took? Um, I ain't going to lie. The way with my team, they had me in the studio, like, my first week home. Mm -hmm. And they was, like, locking me in, mm -hmm. like, yo, 24-hour sessions a day. We just sitting there. It's me in class. We in there. We just working. We just like me and class recorded like six, seven songs before we even dropped Danger. Mm. Like me and class got mad songs together. We ain't just, we ain't even dropped. We just we just kept cooking. How did y'all meet? I knew class since I was a kid. That's like my brother. Mm. Yeah, we knew. Cause he's from Rochester too, right? Yeah, yeah. So y'all grew up. How does it feel to like be growing up with somebody? Y'all both growing up. Y'all both in music. Like, it's dope. It's dope. Cause I ain't gonna lie. Like you know, we got like old messages and shit. Like you know, social media messages and shit. <laughs> we be looking at them shit like, damn, bro, like. Mm -hmm. Niggas that came up, this shit really mm -hmm. happened for me. Right, but. right. Wow. So, what does your team outside of outside of him? What does your team look like? Um, I got uh, well, I, I got RMG. That's my team. I'm RMG. He BGM, so we kind of like we kind of come together as one. Mm -hmm. so, um, RMG, we uh, we a label. We officially a label. Um, it's RMG the label. It's RMG Entertainment. We bringing all the shows to Rochester. So anywhere upstate, it's like kind of RMG kind of like. Got it on lock for the shows. You know, we bringing everybody, um, everybody who come to Rochester. They usually go through RMG. We usually book them and bring them up there. Mm -hmm. And you started RMG? Uh, me, my brother Diddy, and my brother Rain. There's three of us. So you really like a businessman. Like, you on the business yeah. side, you making your music. That's yeah. really dope. So does that have to do with the balance, the, the idea of balance? Yeah, so, um, yeah. So the, the idea of balance, it just came together like, just like I said, it was just trying to find a time and then do everything on some 
the business side, the street mm -hmm. side, just mm -hmm. be, you know, just be valid in all in all places. Mm -hmm. So one thing I think that's interesting though is because you do you do put your pain on the track, of course, and you have like real like substance to your music, mm -hmm. but. I don't want to say that that's not what we're listening to right now, but you know, a lot of the stuff that we're listening to is more so for the beat and like it gets you hype and stuff. Yeah. How do you feel about like your music in comparison to like what's like trending right, right now? Right. So, so uh, what I'm learning right now is that it's a crowd for everything, mm -hmm. and you gotta find it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm learning right now is just how to how to target my audience, like how to stop worrying about the people that ain't listening to my music and worry about the people that is listening to my music mm -hmm. and target people like that, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Cause right now it's like, like for instance, like you see the hardcore rap, it's like, it's, it, it's coming back. Right. Like Benny mm -hmm. and them got it all sold up. And it, yeah. if you see they shows, it's like, they really, they packing out houses. Like mm -hmm. they really packing shows for that kind of music. Right. And mm -hmm. everybody's like, yo, that music dead, it's dead, but now it's coming back. So, I, I, I just see it like it's people that really listen to that music. It's people that listen to drill. It's people that want to listen to harmonize. It's people that want to hear pain. It's people that want to hear substance. Mm -hmm. So you just got to find them, I feel like. So who would you say is your audience right now? Have you found that yet? I feel like my audience would be like, um, on, on, like honestly speaking, I dropped the record. My intro to my record, it kind of opened my eyes up. It's like, damn, everybody want me to rap again. That's, that's that what I come realist, to. Right? Like, yeah, the realest. Mm -hmm. So now, like yesterday, I did the 105.5 interview and I freestyled on there and I went crazy. Mm -hmm. And everybody just like, yo, bro, you got to rap again. Like, this is what you do. Yeah. Like, you got to rap again, bro. Like, that's what they need. So now I'm like, damn, I don't really know. It's like, I want to do the drill. I want to I wanna harmonize and I want to rap. I want to do it all. Like, mm -hmm. And there's no reason why you can't. Yeah. So, so I, I, think I'm, I think I'm still like, finding my audience though, right. honestly though. Okay. Well, you work with a lot of different artists. We already spoke about class. You got Lil Perko, Lil West, and mm -hmm. a few more on your album. How was that, like, collabing with different artists? It was cool. It was cool. I, I tried to keep it, um, I tried to keep it, I, I wanted to keep it Rochester mm -hmm. for my first one. And then I, um, but I, I linked up with Trav. That was, like, my biggest, that was, like, the biggest, the biggest feature for me was, like, Trav and then Murder. But, mm -hmm. but Trav was big, because Trav got me lit, like, mm -hmm. out here. You know what I'm saying? Trav really, and that was dope. Like, mm -hmm. he pulled me up out here, him and Bucks pulled me up to Queens and had me in Queens. We shot the vid and everything was fire. But from that day, ever since I released that song, you know, you know, it's like, you got your little metric tool so you can see who, who right. listening to your music. Mm -hmm. And all my music, all my streams, is, is coming from New York City though. Mm -hmm. Like, I get more streams. That's why I say like, yo, I get all my streams from out in New York City. I get more streams up here. Mm -hmm. So I know you were already known with, for the battle rap and stuff, but what moment was it that you realized that you were going up with your music, like your? I think it was um, I ain't gonna lie, the first record I dropped when I came home. Mm -hmm. Um, first record I dropped, and then it was like one of them shows I did. I opened up for somebody in Rochester. JD. JD Hill. Oh, it was JD Kiss. JD. Yeah, it was Kiss. It, it was going crazy. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, damn, this shit really happening, like. Hey, but I ain't gonna lie, like, you know, you see people singing and shit like they really going through it. That should be dope. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I did this song called Patience. I'm watching these people sing this song like, like they went through that shit like they me. Mm -hmm. Wow, this nigga's in there like really singing that shit. I'm like, nah, this dope. It's a dope feeling. There's a couple of songs that you have like that that I feel like can be relatable for like a whole bunch of people that are listening, especially like anxiety. I think mm -hmm. that that's one that really like. That's one that really hit home for people though. That's why I did it though. Mm -hmm. I, I did it I did it for that. I know there's a lot of people suffering from that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do it. I, and, I, and I got somebody in my family that suffered from it. So I wanted to do it just to, you know, that's like a whole nother. But all that is real. Like I see, that's what I'm saying. Right. I like making music like that. Mm -hmm. And people know that it's real. Like people can hear that shit. Like, nah, man, this nigga ain't capping. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so, of course, in that song, you talk about, like, your brother taking pills and you witnessing that. And a big part of hip-hop culture right now is, like, a lot to do with the drugs and the pills yeah. and all of that. Like, yeah. how, like, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I remember me thinking that shit to be like, yo, um, I, like, I ain't even gonna lie. Like, yo, I remember Future, right? Any drug this nigga say he take, that shit pop. Mm -hmm. Right? That shit crazy. Nigga, talk about a drug we never heard of, nigga. Next day, everybody's on that shit. Niggas don't even know what that shit is. Right. 
just be a whole lot of followers and shit. Like, I've watched Meek interviewing shit. That nigga like, yo, man, you stupid as hell. Pop a perk right now, man. Shit's ain't no perks. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit's ain't no you perks right now, man. Is. Niggas yeah. is pressing up these motherfucking pills like crazy, man. Them shits, you don't know what's in them shits. Mm -hmm. But everybody's still popping them, man. They don't even care. So it's just like, it's a lot of followers. You won't even know what to... I don't even know how to answer that. Like, mm -hmm. that shit ain't never gonna stop. Mm -hmm. and, and it is sad to say they gonna blame it on hip-hop. That's what they blame it on. How influential do you think music is on its listeners? I think it's, it's very influential. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's, it's spooky. When I think about it, it's just like drill, drug, everything, man. It's but do you think that like artists should keep that in consideration when they make any music or is it on the listener to know? No, nah, I'm an artist and that's, it's hard to do that. You can't yeah. even do that. Like, it's that shit that's around you, that shit that you really going through. So yeah. you can't like, what you supposed to put a cap on that shit? The kids, is, I mean, like, you growing up, you're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to take that shit in your own way, understand it. Mm -hmm. But it, it's tough, though. It's tough. I know it's tough as a kid to, to see this shit and, and want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what they want to do. So what, 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 what advice would you give to someone, maybe, who's, like, Watching this stuff, you said it's tough for kids like mm -hmm. to hear this stuff and not be, I guess, interested or intrigued in like trying to experiment with it or whatever. Like, is there any advice that you would give like to young people who may be hearing this? If, we, talk, if we talk about like the streets or like or taking drugs or like we talk about making music, like in which, which part? Of we it? talking about drugs right now. We're gonna get uh, to. So the the drug part is like, um, as a, if you a kid, you could see like. You see, all right, so you see, you see the ups. I know they, they only looking at the ups of the shit. How these niggas look like they having fun and shit. For, um, for the kids, I would say to go look up like all these motherfuckers that's dying from this shit. These kids dying from this shit, taking fake pills, and they don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. Word. Well, on the positives, no. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that you were doing a lot of good performances. You opened up at Rolling Loud. Mm -hmm. Which I thought was really dope. How was that? That was fire. I was, I was like, that's that was big. a dope experience. Yeah, that was dope. That was dope. So, would you say like that was one of the highlights of your career so far? Or? Yeah, I believe so. And I, and I wasn't even like, you know, I was on set with Murder, so, mm -hmm. but it was a big moment just to be around all them people. You know right. what I'm saying? And then just knowing, knowing Trav and knowing Bucks, like afterwards, they brought me around everybody. Like, you know, when we went to the, some bowling shit, man, we, they had me around everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, he was introducing me to everybody, so I met a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it was a dope experience. Were there any other moments that you could think of, like, off the top of your head, that's, like, been, like, big moments for you? It's, it's, um, besides what like, I would say, um, even the dirt, like, you know, um, the Rochester, uh, the dirt shit in Rochester, mm -hmm. um, just performing on, on that stage, man, was dope. There was a lot of people there. It was a sold-out event. Um, and then just, uh, I think now, what I'm doing now, like, I ain't gonna lie that 1055, I always wanted to go to a Rochester radio station and burn that shit down, because mm -hmm. we ain't had that. We had a radio station there that wasn't really supporting us. Mm -hmm. So now, when I came home, I started making noise, they called me up there, I made it my boss, said, man, I'm about mm -hmm. to burn this bitch down, I swear That's to God. Good. So that was a big moment for me, I ain't even gonna lie, and that shit happened yesterday, mm -hmm. but that was big, and then I came here to do this shit the next day, so it was like... So we gonna turn this shit up. So you getting the year started, like yeah. strong. You coming in strong. So what? What else can we expect from you this year? What you um, got? To I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop a. Um, I'm gonna drop a. I'm gonna drop like a rap album though for them too. For the fans, I want to hear that. For the fans, I want to hear that real music. I'm gonna drop a rap album. Mm -hmm. But I'm about to drop some drill shit too. Though. Ooh, yeah, I got to some look drill out shit. I'm trying to drop. I just recorded the drill. Um, I'm just. I don't even want to talk, like, really, I, I got to put this feature on it, though. I'm trying to get this feature together for the drill, and then, yeah, we're going to make it happen. Sure. Yeah, for sure. So, is there any, any, can we get any details on that, or you want to hold it down? I gotta hold it down. Okay, I gotta hold that's it down. fair. I got, that's I know, fair. I know I'm going to say this. I got one, I got one feature that I'm working on with, um, it's for my rap shit, though. It's, uh, it's with Millie's. Okay. So, yeah, mm, I got okay. that that I'm working on. That's going to be big. Mm-hmm. Nice. Is there anybody who you would like to work with? Um, in the game? Yeah. Yeah, on the drill side or on the uh It could be whatever. Give me five. It could be on the um, drill side. Meek Mill, Rod Wave, Dirk, uh, Lil Baby, and it gotta be a female. I ain't say no female. Um 
Let me see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with Nick. Ah, uh, don't do that because she's no, no, no. Because if it was Nikki, you would have said Nikki. Yo. Um. I don't know what female, man. Nah, who you listening nah, to? Nah. <laughs> who you listening um, to? Yo, matter of fact, I'm lying. Yo, what shorty name will be doing all the freestyles? Megan? Nah, what's the shorty name from Instagram? We'll be talking like, you know what we talking about? Lady London. Lady London. She fired. She fired. Okay, so now, of course, I'm going to ask you, as an upcoming artist, what is some advice that you would give to other upcoming artists? Um, Learn the business. Learn the business first. Mm -hmm. Fuck making music. Learn the business first. Learn how to make money off your music and then and, and then push it. And um that's really the main thing, man. Learn how to tap into every revenue. Mm -hmm. Learn how much one song can make you like ten times though. Like tap into every rev, uh every streaming site, learn how much you getting off of each stream from each site mm -hmm. and do your breakdown sheets and um tap into your metric tools, man. Understand where you understand how to target your audience mm -hmm. and who listening to your music. Is there something that you learned about the, the business of the industry that you wish that you would have learned a little sooner? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's it's really the business side. It's it's understanding how to make money off of music. Mm -hmm. Cause remember, like it was this SoundCloud wave going on mm -hmm. back in the day. They'd be like, yo, these SoundCloud rappers, man, them little niggas was making mad bread off of that shit, and people wasn't really tapped in. Mm -hmm. They wasn't tapped into that, and they just now starting to tap in and get into it, but. Um, I wish I, I wish I, I knew about it because I wasn't like I was literally we was going broke on this shit. Mm -hmm. I was going broke on this music. I was giving this shit my all, spending all my money on this shit. Now I don't. I make I make I make oh, I make bread off this music shit now. Right. I tap into everything, make money off these streams and, and everything else I do. I don't play around with it. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I I feel like I saw something or read something that said like when you got out, you tried to like buy all of your beats. Yeah, yep, that's a fact. That's what I did too. I that was, was trying, so I was trying to buy the exclusive rights to all my. Okay, exclusive. That's what it was. Yeah, right. yes, yes. That was and, good, the smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to do that just to own up, own all my publishing and shit. But that shit, you know, that just just came from reading and all that. Just trying to understand the business. Mm -hmm. But then, um, you know, so little producer niggas, they ain't stupid. Some niggas like, hell nah, nigga, I, uh, I give you 80%, I'll take my 20%. Of it, <laughs> but, but some of them sold them to me, though. Some of them sold me 100% pub, 100% exclusive rights, took the beats off of YouTube, all that. But some of them was like, yo, nah, man, I got a feeling you're going to go up. Like, I need this 20% pub on your shit. <laughs> or, they okay. All right, well, is there anything else that you feel like, you know, you would like for people who are watching to know? Um... Yeah, I just want everybody to uh, go stream my album, Balance, man. You ain't going to be disappointed, man. Um, it's Viciani, v dot C I A N N I I on all social medias, all platforms. Um, Viciani TV on YouTube. Go subscribe and go tap into that album, man. You ain't going to be disappointed, I promise, man. Yeah. Talk of the town. Thank y'all for having me, too. Thank I appreciate y'all. All right, y'all. See you on the next episode.